Ricky, you got a delivery. Give me a hand with these dumb things. Hello, Ri Richard from BudgetGuitars.com. Let me tell you a little story. About 35 years ago, studio monitors were really expensive. And this monitor speaker came out and it kind of changed the game. At a price of about $200 per speaker, it provided a relatively flat response and a decent bass and a nice high end. And it was a passive speaker and it sold really, really well. So about 35 years ago, I bought a pair of those speakers, which of course was the Alesis Monitor One speakers. I've had this set of speakers driven by a power amp for over 30 years. And guess what? I'm in the process of mixing my latest album, which is called Attack of the 80 Synths. I just thought, you know, this is a really good time to update my monitors. But I like to do things on a budget. And so I did a lot of listening. I did a lot of research. I looked at the KRK. Uh, if you watch any YouTube videos at all, you're going to see 90% of the home studios you see almost will have KRK speakers. Here's the reason for that. The KRK speakers sound really good. The reason I didn't buy them and the reason I bought these instead is because the, uh, the Cali Audio LP8 V2 speakers sound very accurate. So to my ears, the KRK is a little bit of a hyped speaker. They make everything kind of sound kind of good. And uh, I'm not disrespecting them. I almost bought the KRKs because they do sound great. But for where I'm at in my stage of mixing, and I've been doing it, you know, as a hobby for decades, I wanted the flattest speakers I could get in a reasonable price range. Normally, a set of these together is 500. So these are powered monitors. So it's 100 watts per speaker. I think it's like 60 watts to the woofer and 40 watts to the tweeter. So 100 watts each and uh, eight inch woofer. And I'm gonna unbox these now so let's go ahead and do the unboxing, shall we? By the way, these speakers, they only have an eight inch woofer, but the speakers themselves are about 19 pounds each. So they're, they're relatively substantial. I think they're made out of MDF, not plastic. So it turns out when you get one of these boxes, there's something inside it. Oh, we start out with a quick start guide which basically shows you how to set up the speakers and how not to set them up. On the back is safety information, which I'm sure tells you, you know, like don't run 220 volts into this in the United States. I don't know. Of course, you've got the do not eat packet that everything ships with these days. I will not eat that. I've got some stick em feet. They're very little feet. That was a band, little feet. So it comes with little feet. comes with a uh, substantial, regular, average, everyday, easily replaceable power cord. So it, it's just a regular power cord. It's not like a brick in a special... Thank you, Callie. Thank you. Thank you for not giving me yet another power brick. Appreciate that a lot. So I lose it. I just put in, <laughs> get another one. That's great. I'm already in a great mood now. That's just... I'm so excited. Okay, definitely bigger than the monitor ones. I mean, I have seen these in person. This is not like, not like I've never seen them. You know what I, you know what I think? I'm gonna pull it out carefully. Okay, and the bottom of the box is basically nothing, so we don't have to worry about that. It's got that new electronic smell. What color is it? Black. It is a beauty, isn't it? So one of the reasons, hang on. One of the reasons, man, this is big. Look at the size of this thing next to me. This is, this is definitely large and hefty. Well, because it has an amp in it. Anyway. 
One of the big reasons that I wanted to get these speakers and replace the monitor ones is, if you'll notice on the monitor one speakers, there's no front port. There's no port on the front. There's a port in the back. Now what a port is, is it basically, it extends the bass response of the cabinet by letting some of the low frequencies inside of the cabinet out through the port. That's a terrible description. It's not remotely accurate, but it's sort of close enough, right? So low frequencies. The problem, as you can see, is with most home studios, your speakers are up against the wall, and so you don't want to be projecting that bass into the wall. Now, in my case, I've tried to pull the speakers out from the wall a little bit. With these guys, they're front ported, so that air comes out the front. The low frequencies come out the front. So anyway, this is the Cali Audio LP8 V2, normally $250 each. I got them on sale for $200 each, so 20% off which was a great deal. Uh, by the time you watch this video, that deal will probably be gone. But in my opinion, these are still the best studio monitors, powered monitors you can buy for $500 a pair in that price range. I haven't heard anything better. Anyway, so we've got, it's a two-way system, eight inch woofer, tweeter. And if you look at the, uh, the pattern of the plastic around the speaker, around the tweeter rather, what this is really designed to do is kind of spread out the high frequencies to give you like a, a wider stereo field. So the stereo imaging will be a lot better on these than, than on the old Alesis. By the way, what I'm going to do with those old Alesis monitors? Well, obviously I'm going to keep them. They'll probably go on my TV. So let's look at the back. So here what you have is you have a comic story, and it's the story of a lonely speaker who discovers his home. That's not what it is. It's, it's uh, diagrams that show you how to use these, these dip switches to set up the EQ for the monitor based on where it is. Is it on a stand? Is it on a stand away from a wall? Is it on a table? Is it on a table close to a wall? Y yes. So, and then you've got a little bit of a accommodation for more or less bass based on the room it's in. So all of that is good. This is really cool. There's three different inputs for this. And so if you want to send it a uh, RCA, it'll take it. If you want to send it XLR, it'll take it. If you want to send a quarter inch, it will take it. And then you've got a, basically a volume knob for the amplifier. This is where the power goes in, and here's the switch. Super simple, should be super easy to set up. Very exciting. I don't think I mentioned it before, but I think the power rating on the monitor ones is 80 watts. And I think that this is this is like a, this is a 100 watt amp, but I'm not gonna be running it anywhere near that loud. I wanna be somewhere around, I think it's like 86 decibels. Like a good volume, but not anything that's gonna kill my ears. I've spent a lifetime in music and I do not have tinnitus. I almost have almost no tinnitus. Every once in a while, there will be like a little ringing in one of my ears, you know, and that is from amplifiers and stuff. But in general, I've kept the volume really low. I guess if you don't know much about studio monitors, we should talk about flat, shouldn't we? Okay. So a home stereo speaker is designed to pump up the bass and pump up the treble and kind of decrease the mid-range and basically hype the sound, right? And if you just take a pair of home stereo speakers and mix on them, that mix is going to sound great on those speakers, but it's not necessarily going to translate elsewhere because you might not have the bass frequencies up high enough because the stereo speakers are already pushing out more of those low frequencies. What you want is accuracy. So you want a monitor that from the low frequencies up to the high frequencies is going to be as flat as possible. And no speaker system is perfectly flat. Every speaker system has flaws. What you will find in, in uh, 2022 is if you buy a set of these, you're, they, they make a six inch woofer version of this, the LP6 V2s. Those are also very good speaker. This one has a little bit more bass, but very similar, it's the same tweeter. All speakers have compromises, all monitors. So none of them are perfectly flat. But once you hit a certain price point, you get to the law of diminishing returns, right? 
So if you spend $100 on a pair of speakers, they're, they're not going to be that great. If you spend $200 on a pair of speakers, not so great. If you spend $400, you can get a pretty good sounding pair. If you spend five, six, seven, eight hundred, you can get a definitely good sounding pair. Once you go over a thousand, it will sound a little bit better, but you're going to spend a lot more money. So there's people who drop, you know, three, five, seven, ten thousand dollars, twenty, thirty thousand dollars. Like the sky is the limit for what you can spend on studio monitors. But because the technology is so good these days, this thing would outperform uh, this two hundred. Well, five hundred dollars for a pair of these will outperform speakers th from 30 years ago that were probably five thousand dollars. The technology has just gotten that good.